When in doubt, shoot everything, okay? Oh god! <laughs> I regret everything! Hey everyone, Jarek the Gaming Dragon here. If you're already subscribed and you haven't clicked that bell, be sure to do that, otherwise YouTube won't tell you that I posted anything. If you haven't subscribed, well, watch this video and maybe consider subscribing if you like it. Recently, I decided to download the highest rated mods on Steam for Half-Life 2. This led me to download Half-Life 2 Year Long Alarm, Half-Life 2 Downfall, and Half-Life 2 Entropy Zero. And yes, this is because I saw Jolly Winker's video on Entropy Zero. Jolly Winker is hilarious, so if you don't watch his channel, I would highly recommend you go subscribe to him. But his video was more about humor, and I really wanted to focus on what makes Entropy Zero so special. Now, I could make a video kind of like this for Downfall and Year Long Alarm, but those mods are more or less what you would expect. If you've played episode 2, you've played these mods. It's just more content for a game you really like, and that's great. If you liked episode 2, you want more episode 2, so that's where these mods come in. But they don't do anything that makes them stand out as a different experience like Entropy Zero does. Right in the intro, the game boots up with sort of a replay coming from a mask in that signature Combine Blue. This reminds me of when you had a replay from, say, Jenkins' helmet in Halo Combat Evolved. These are replays from your experiences. Yes, you are a Combine in this game, which I find to be incredibly interesting. Now Half-Life sorta saw something like this before when it came to Opposing Force, but you played as a Marine, which, you know, that's still human, and you never quite got the orders from the higher-ups to kill other scientists, so for all intents and purposes, you basically are just another scientist trying to survive in Black Mesa. But it was a more polished version of Half-Life 1 with new content, new guns, new enemies, so it made for arguably the best Half-Life 1 release. However, with Entropy Zero, you are on the bad guy side. Playing as a Combine is genuinely interesting because you were taught that these are the bad guys and you shouldn't want to sympathize for them. This mod manages to break all of that down. The game starts with you raiding a civilian building with other Combine, and the Combine speak. Yes, they manage to make authentic sounding Combine voice acting. I'm not sure what filter they used or who did the voice acting, but it genuinely sounds just like the Combine in base Half-Life 2. And they do more than this. The Combine will have regular conversations in this mod. On top of this, your character will occasionally just say one-liners. Not cheesy one-liners, but just speak and talk about what's happening in the game. This is fantastic, because it gives a level of personality to the Combine that was never in the base game. In the base game, the Combine were just mostly mindless NPCs that ran at you and shot you, and that's intentional, they were supposed to feel synonymous. They were supposed to feel like this oppressive force always looking over you. However, if you're playing as the Combine, there needs to be some sort of personality or motivation to be playing the mod, and this game gives you a lot of motivation and even makes you sympathize for your character and the other Combine. It also has some of the best achievements in any game ever. <laughs> okay, you guys can see the achievements. <laughs> but most of this stuff also applies to the other side. In Base Half-Life 2, you actually don't really see a whole lot of what the Resistance does. You see a lot of Gordon Freeman, a lot of Alex, a lot of Dr. Vance, but you don't really see the big picture that much. And that's fine, Half-Life 2 is a very fixated story on the main protagonist. But Entropy Zero really focuses more on how the Rebels have built their camps, and how the world feels. The Rebels use guerrilla tactics, they use the Combine's turrets, and it actually feels like a proper resistance force. Now, graphically, mods a lot of the time are at mercy of what the base game can do. However, they can be incredibly well polished, and that's what Entropy Zero does. It doesn't necessarily do what, say, Dear Esther or Cinematic Mod did. It didn't really try to rewrite how the graphics of Half-Life 2 looked, but it's so polished that every area looks very distinct and lived in. Every rebel camp has some sort of makeshift cooking area, or some sort of living area that they would be sleeping in. They have defenses and higher places of buildings, or maybe some turrets that they grabbed and turned into their own. Now again, it doesn't try to push the envelope of what the Source engine can do, but clearly there was a lot of time and polish put into every single area to make it seem believable. And it's very easy to install as well. As I mentioned, it's on Steam, it's part of the Source engine, this will run perfectly fine on any computer, you don't 
need to do any workarounds, just click install game, and as long as you own Half-Life 2, you can play the mod. So clearly this is a very polished mod, and that's true for the gameplay as well. You probably are seeing all the same weapons and saying, well, I've already played this before, but that isn't really the case. The weapons feel entirely different than the base Half-Life game. The models may be the same, and the reloading animations may be the same, but the damage models are very different. Every weapon does more damage than Half-Life 2, and I think the logic behind this is because civilians don't have armor, so it should take less bullets to kill them. But at the same time, you take more damage as well to balance this out, so I really think they just wanted to experiment and make the gunplay feel better than base Half-Life 2, which is gunplay can be a little bit lacking, let's be honest. As another countermeasure to the damage output you now have, weapons have a lot more recoil. You can't simply spray and pray with the SMG without having to deal with the recoil that comes with higher damage. In my personal opinion, this feels so much better than base Half-Life 2. Having enemies get down faster, but also having to worry about your own health more, makes the game a lot more engaging. You can't take too many hits in this game, but it's also not so punishing to the point of where it feels like, say, Rising Storm. You can take some, just nowhere near as much as the base game. To add on top of all of this, if your weapons do more damage in your game, they need to sound just as powerful as they feel. And the guns sound so good in this mod. The shotgun sounds like a freaking cannon! The gunplay really is a lot more satisfying than Half-Life 2, so don't be shied away by the fact that all the weapons use the same models and animations, they don't feel like the base guns. But the gameplay isn't just mindlessly running through and murdering civilians, there's some really good set pieces in here. Just to name a few examples, at one point you have to quote unquote stealth through a civilian outpost. Now I usually hate stealth, but I feel like calling it stealth is a little misleading. For one, it's incredibly easy, you can just crouch by everyone and there's a very obvious path you should be taking. And two, although it makes it more difficult, you can also go through here and not have to stealth, but I would highly advise you stealth because there are turrets everywhere. Effectively, if a civilian spots you, he sets off an alarm and there's turrets in every direction. But also, once you sneak by all the rebels, there's a main computer that can turn all the turrets against them. After you just snuck by them and you probably inevitably failed the first time because you weren't really aware of what was fully going on, this is really satisfying. The second set piece I want to talk about is a set piece that almost is directly borrowed from Doom 3. As you probably have noticed, a lot of this gameplay seems to have some sort of Battlefield 3 blue filter, and this is actually sort of a night vision that the Combine have. It's so useful that you'll probably be playing most of the game with it turned on. However, at one point of the game, you jump into some electrified puddle, and this will deactivate your night vision, and you cannot use it. At which point, a stalker comes by with a very bright flashlight, and you have to walk through the complete darkness with only this flashlight and some flares you can find on the ground. All the while, zombies are attacking you from every direction. Does this sound like Doom 3? It should sound like Doom 3. This is the exact scenario that you found with the scientist holding that lantern. And this, in theory, could end up really frustrating because if the stalker gets killed, well, then that's game over. With that said, for the most part, the zombies will hyperfixate on you instead of the stalker, so this isn't really an issue. It's a really interesting set piece that I actually quite liked. The next thing I want to touch on is that I heard a lot of people say this mod is way too hard, and I just didn't have that experience. I think people just aren't quite used to doing more damage and taking more damage, as it really changes how you approach each scenario. On top of that, when you first launch the game, the game's default difficulty is set to hard, so keep that in mind. Regardless, I didn't find it to be very difficult. I found it to be more challenging than base Half-Life 2, but that doesn't say a whole lot because Half-Life 2 isn't really difficult at all. With that said, it's not a flawless mod, as it does have some problems. It's prone to the occasional, I'm going to randomly kill you with no warning thing. Oh, Dorvin. Take that! I don't like this. Oh. Did that actually kill me or was I supposed to die? What bullshit is that? That's some fucking bullshit right there. I have to do all of this over again now? What's particularly bad about that scenario right there is that just earlier in the game, they had the same thing happen to you and the bigger explosive blew up and you were mostly fine. You still had health, it didn't kill you. But this tiny little grenade that has much less power will instantly kill you every time and there isn't a checkpoint right before this room. This isn't difficulty, this is trial and error, and this shit really does not fly. You obviously learn after the first time, and it only gets me once, and you remember to quick save beforehand the next time, but it just annoys the hell out of me when stuff like this happens. And there's a few examples of this happening throughout the mod. The game just kind of decides, hey, you're gonna die now. Aw, uh, well. 
how am I supposed to predict this or see this coming? And again, I don't mind dying or a difficult game. What I do mind is trial and error. I find trial and error to be really, really annoying and tedious. Thankfully, off the top of my head, I can only think of three or so instances where this happens in this mod, and the entire mod is around two hours long. Clearly, this is just a very, very small blemish in an amazingly well done mod. The modder behind Entropy Zero is called Breadman, and he's working on Entropy Zero 2, which, as everyone has said, probably should have been called Entropy 1. He announced he's working on Entropy 2 around March of 2018, so over a year ago, but he's been pretty consistent with giving us updates about every single month at least. It's still in the works, and it looks in the sequel like you were going to be playing as one of the Overwatch Combine, which seems awesome. Needless to say, you really should be looking forward to the sequel of this mod, as the first mod is definitely worth playing. If you have Steam, if you own Half-Life, to go play this mod right now, it's free. After all the games I've played over the last six or seven months or so, it's been really relieving and kind of just calming to go back to playing Half-Life 2 mods. I've played a lot of Source games, I'm sure all of you guys have too, and there's this certain comforting feeling about it that just, I enjoyed myself. But that should be all I have to say about this mod, I streamed this over to my Twitch, thanks all of you guys that hung out with me over there, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash jarek for gaming dragon, if you subscribe over on Twitch you'll get to see my videos one day ahead of time, same thing goes for my patrons, you can click on my Patreon link down at the bottom right right here, thank all of you guys for watching once again, and I will see you next video.